Skeptics, I'm Stephen Wilkes, the Vice President of, uh, of Canberra Skeptics. Um, as most of us, I think, here now, particularly our more regular uh, guests and friends and members, we always have a, really always have a meeting on that great day, the 30th of each month. And this, of course, is particularly, uh, to my mind, particularly great and jolly day, it's Friday the 13th, which uh, we think is a suitably apt day for Skeptics to have their monthlies on. Um, this particular topic we have today on the uh, so-called uh, Apollo Moon Hoax presented by Pete Barrett, one of our stalwart members, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, probably a pretty good topic. It's not a, it's a topic which I have to admit in some respects I find slightly depressing, partly because of the trivialisation of such a great achievement as going to the moon, I mean, and also trivialisation of the most wondrous of uh, the sciences, astronomy and related field of space travel. Some of you may have just had a look at the uh, Unsubtle Skies display just outside there in that uh, open exhibition gallery just as you were coming into this talk. Um, it's always struck me as being a particular field, a particular issue, that can be dignified as such, as uh, comparable to the so the Shakespeare did not write his plays claim. The point being that in both cases there is absolutely, in my view, absolutely, utterly no evidence whatsoever for the conspiracy theories and a host of straightforward, easy to understand evidence to the contrary. That's what I reckon. We'll see what Pete thinks. Indeed, I think they both cast a lot of both interest in life on the psychology of belief in conspiracies. Um, anyway, Canvas Skeptics, very, very briefly, it's a great little group. We stand for rational thinking, evidence-based thinking. Our motto is seek the evidence. As you know, we have these monthly meetings on Tuesday on the 13th of each month, um, usually followed by dinner afterwards, and indeed there is a dinner after this particular event at the Zen Guy in London, so it's <coughs> confused with the Zen Guy in Northbourne Avenue. There are still a few places available, so if you see my colleague Nick Ware straight after this uh, event, we should be hoping we still squeeze a few more people in. Um, at the end of the uh, talk, uh, people will be answering uh, questions. Um, I should also mention that our very next talk coming up next month is just to confuse you and to be contrary, despite what I said about the, the joys of the 13th, it's actually going to be on the 14th. The 13th of the next month is Sunday, so we will bow to practicality. The next talk will be presented by Jeremy Shermer, a quite world-renowned philosopher in the AMU. The AMU has long had a very, very strong um, philosophy department, and Jeremy will be talking, as you can see on the Next, and I must say, extremely open question, is Australia a rational society or why we need a house of law? It can be interpreted in some number of ways. I won't speculate on that one. But we'll turn up and find out. Anyway, without any further ado, I will now hand over to Pete Barrett. Public. The people who promote the theory say there is also evidence of the hoax 
be in the official record. As a result, the evaluator might like to do is to examine the Apollo moon hoax as a conspiracy theory and to see what we can learn about conspiracy theories in general. Uh, and this is the basis of the alternative title for this talk. A lot of the arguments presented by Apollo hoax believers are technical and can really only be debunked by people with the appropriate technical knowledge. The rest of us, without the appropriate knowledge, uh, don't really have the means to tell which technical argument is correct. But importantly, we don't really need that technical knowledge. Instead, it's possible to examine many Apollo hoax arguments with plain logic. The trick is knowing which questions to ask. And that's the aim of this talk, to give you the means to challenge other conspiracy theories, even when you don't have the relevant technical knowledge. The answers you receive should give you a useful insight into the reliability of the conspiracy theory. Before I go any further, I'd like to point out that I don't have any technical qualifications relevant to this topic. I'm not an engineer or a scientist, and neither do I have any formal training in logic. Some of the arguments I'll present will be technical, but I'm fairly sure that you won't need to be a rocket scientist to understand them. This talk will be divided into three main parts. The first part will be a rep that will list a representative sample of the Apollo Moon Hoax arguments. The second part will cover some of the ways uh, of testing conspiracy theory arguments when you don't have the relevant technical knowledge. And the third part of the talk will then apply these tests to the Apollo Moon Hoax arguments previously listed. <coughs> At the end of my talk, if you have any Apollo Moon Hoax questions I haven't covered, uh, which interest you, please feel free to ask them. Uh, or for that matter, any other related question. Uh, I might have the real fall to technical qualifications, uh, but I'm reasonably familiar with uh, most of the uh, most aspects of the Apollo project uh, and the Apollo Moon Hoax theory. Okay, let's have a look at some of the Apollo Moon Hoax arguments. As I mentioned earlier, hoax believers present two main reasons that they consider are behind the need to fake Apollo, technical and environmental. The technical arguments are that NASA didn't have the know-how to actually send astronauts to the moon and safely return them to the Earth. The environmental arguments are that the conditions in space and on the moon are too dangerous for humans to survive. In addition, hoax believers say there's evidence in the photographic and videographic records which support their claim to the missions were faked. Can people read that? Okay, well the first part will deal with some of the technical arguments and I apologise for not having a chance to make this a little bit larger. Um, sending a rocket to the moon is a tricky thing. This is uh, what it says up here. In the middle of the 1960s, the Soviet Union held a major technological advantage uh, over the USA uh, in rocket engineering, having achieved the following firsts the first satellite in space, the first animal in space, the first spacecraft to reach the moon, the first man in space, the first woman in space, the first time two main spacecraft were in space simultaneously, first spacewalk, and the first three-man spacecraft. Yet barely five years later, Apollo 11 was supposed to have reached the moon, while the Soviets had gone. The sudden advance in American technology is too incredible to credit. Then we have the lunar module. It's one of the more outlandish spacecraft ever built. Hoax believers point out all sorts of apparent problems with its operation, of which I'll list a few. The lunar module had never landed on the moon before Apollo 11. <laughs> its computer was so small it had less computing power than washing machines have today. It's ludicrous to believe that the spacecraft that designed the lunar module's ascent stage could lift off the moon and rendezvous with the command module, and Video footage of the ascent stage lifting off from the moon shows it shooting upwards as though being hauled up by cables with no rocket exhaust showing. And on top of that, the spacesuits were clearly impractical. They had massive zippers, uh, which would have prevented them from being airtight. Um, and on top of that, the, uh, the, the spacesuits were pressurized to such an extent that the astronauts could never have moved their fingers. <laughs> 